This is not clickbait. This is the story of how I broke three ribs and I punctured my lung. Here's how it went down. I woke up on the morning of Saturday the 29th to a world of snow. It had snowed about probably seven inches that night. And my friend Isaac was here to sleep me over. So we decided to go outside at about 10 in the morning. For a little bit of reference, I have a pretty big yard and we have been wrestling, like full on wrestling in the snow, me versus him. I was winning, of course, was not even a contest. We eventually worked our way over to the trampoline. What I had forgotten was that a couple weeks earlier, my dad and I had put stakes in our the ground next to the trampoline to keep it from blowing over in a windstorm. And for reference, the stake was like this. It was about this big and it was holding on the trampoline. So it was a big hefty piece of wood. This was a big stake. This is it in comparison to my hand. This was a beefy stake. Here's what happens. I'm wrestling Isaac. I think what happened was that I pushed him backwards and then like a klutz tripped over my own two feet, fell on my side onto this stake. I was standing right here and I tripped and I fell onto my side on this stake and instantly, like instantly, right off the bat, I couldn't breathe. And at first I assumed the best. I was just like, oh, I got the wind knocked out of me. And it happens sometimes. It's, it's, this is the way of a life of a 16 year old boy wrestling in the snow. From this stake, my house is probably 200 feet maybe, if I had to guess. So I'm like stumbling getting to the house. And I finally get to the house and I sit down next to our wood stove. And by this point, Isaac, Isaac had long known that something was wrong. But my uncle Eric was in the house. Isaac's dad, he was in the house too. And Isaac was like, something's wrong with Jed. Because at this point, the only way I could talk was by going, I, I, could, I, I, could, I could all talk like this. This was the most I could talk. I'm sitting there wheezing. And uncle Eric says, can you lift your arms above your head and breathe? And I tried that. And I was, I could do it. I, 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 at this point, I can breathe still. I'm taking in about probably a fifth of a normal breath is probably the most I can go because it hurts painfully to do any more than that. So from there, Isaac goes and gets my dad who is shoveling outside the driveway and my dad comes in and my dad is a trained EMP. He is good at medical situations and knowing what to do in a situation, an emergency. His first reaction was you fell on the stake because we have three acres. He said, you happen to be wrestling in the one area that we have a stake. Which I later found out, he told me, was because he was um, scared. Because, like, you could tell that I was really hurt. And his big concern was that I got hit in the spleen. Because the spleen, if you don't know, is actually very dangerous. Because, A, it's kind of useless, so there's really no point for being there. And, B, in car accidents a lot of the time, people will die from the spleen. Because they'll puncture it, and internal bleeding will eventually cause them to bleed out. But it doesn't look like there's anything wrong, because on the outside... No, it doesn't, there's nothing wrong on the outside. It's a spleen. It's inside your body. So he was very worried about that. I'm getting worse. Like, I, it is getting harder and harder for me to breathe. I'm taking sh shorter and shorter breaths. At this point, I am realistically probably taking in a tenth of a normal breath, and that's the most I can manage. We decide it's probably best to go to the hospital, which in a normal day would be not that big of a deal. But we have a couple problems stopping us. Number one, we're in the middle of a nor'eastern, which if you don't live on the east coast, means it's a giant storm a giant snowstorm that is just constant snow and wind and only happens in the northeast which is why it's called a nor'eastern that's issue one there's been very little plowing done because the snow is coming down so fast since my dad is an emp he knows about all these situations so before we went to the hospital my dad was running around the house getting sleeping bags extra clothes because one of his biggest fears is that since we're in the middle of a nor'eastern the car could break down on the side of the road on the highway and we'll be stuck there and potentially get hypothermia and we throw it all in the back of our land cruiser which if you don't know is this not this but it's something like this like this is probably the closest thing you'll find to it it's, it's a lot like this and it's lucky we had that because our other two cars are two minivans and if we had had those two minivans we realistically would probably not have made it to the hospital we probably would have broken down on the side of the road i'm taking probably an 11th of a breath maximum i cannot breathe for the life of me i remember there were two or three times when i was telling myself all right you're just gonna breathe really deeply now and then not being able to do so because my body refused to because it would hurt so badly and at long last we finally get there probably two minutes later the doctor comes in after my dad has filled out some forms or whatever and i go into the room and i sit down on one of those hospital beds and they do a bunch of doctor examining stuff i was still just trying to breathe at this point so i'm not too clear on the details but they do a bunch of examining stuff probably taking my pulse my arm pressure uh they, i know they did an ultrasound on me which i thought they only did when you're pregnant but good news i'm not pregnant and they confirmed what we kind of had suspected which was that i had three broken ribs and those ribs had punctured my lung and the lower left region of my lung had collapsed 
which was bad. <laughs> I didn't know this until after, but my dad told me that they brought him into the hallway and told him about that and said like, this is serious. We need to get him to like a better hospital to treat him. And he said that he literally was on the verge of tears because he was scared. And the only reason he didn't cry was because he thought to himself, if Jed sees me crying, how is he going to react? Which, to be honest, I probably would have. <laughs> if my dad's crying, I'm probably like, yeesh, this is the end of the road for me. It's been nice, but I'm out. Here's the situation. There's one ambulance that gets to the better hospital. There's me and another patient. I don't know the condition of the other patient, but my condition is apparently pretty bad. The doctors have a choice to make. Who's going to the hospital? Only one of us can fit in the ambulance, and they have to make a choice. And I got the ambulance, boys. I beat out the other guy for the worst injury. That ambulance was mine all the way. I am the only one fit to ride in an ambulance to the hospital. That's all I'll say. Hope the other guy's okay. I'm in the ambulance, and by this point, they'd actually, I was still having trouble breathing, but it was easier now because they'd given me a dose of fentanyl. When I first, when they first said they were gonna give me fentanyl, I was like, Fentanyl? That's a that's a that's a pretty, that's a pretty serious drug. It's a, it's a that, that, that kills people. That's a it's a pretty hardcore drug. But turns out, it is a very effective painkiller when given in small registered doses. So they gave me some fentanyl. As soon as it kicked in, it was easier to breathe, and I could actually breathe and I could talk semi normally. But like I said, this is still a nor'eastern. We're in the middle of a snowstorm right now. There's this guy. And I'm still like, I'm a little, first of all, I'm a little doped up on fentanyl. Second of all, I'm having trouble breathing still. So I don't remember exactly what this guy looked like. But the only thing I remember is that I remember that he looked a little bit like Eagleton Ron from Parks and Rec. I remember he looked a little bit like this. Not in like a bad way. Like that's kind of how I remember him looking like. And every 10 minutes, Eagleton Ron checks in on me. He's like, hey, are you okay? What's going on? Like, you good? You want some more painkiller? And actually, I, I didn't tell uh, I didn't tell them this, but I asked them for more fentanyl once because um it, it, I started to like, not be able to breathe again that well. So I asked them for more fentanyl once, and they said, yeah. And they were like, hey, if you want any more, just let us know. We'll give it to you. And I actually didn't ask for more because, A, I was doing fine. Like, I could breathe fairly well like better better than i could better than i could an hour ago I'll give, let me let me just say that better than i could an hour ago but the secret reason that i don't think i've ever told i don't think i've told anyone yet that i didn't want more fentanyl is because secretly i was worried that if i had more fentanyl and this may sound like a little bit of a childish concern but i was worried that i'd be one of those people who like has like a drug in the hospital and then like gets hooked on like heroin from it which may be a little bit of an unrealistic fear but in my mind, I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna take the risk. So I didn't have any more fentanyl. So I finally get to the hospital. And they wheel me into the uh, room and there's no joke, probably eight or nine doctors just standing around me as I'm in the hospital. And later on, my dad said that when he saw those eight or nine doctors, he like was like, how bad is this? Like, are they lying to me? Like, they can't be telling me everything. There's eight or nine doctors standing in this one room for just for just little old me. It turns out that they all were just making sure I was okay, just in case they had to go into surgery because when my when my rib um punctured my lung, it let a lot of air out into my left side. So my left side was kind of full of air, which can be bad. And apparently, sometimes the procedure for that, if it's really bad, is that they operate on you and stick a tube in to try to siphon the air out. But luckily, they didn't have to do that to me. But apparently, those doctors were there just in case they did have to do that to me. They gave me a medicine that helped expand my lungs and allowed me to get air into it. Because before, I was still having trouble breathing. Because every time I breathed, it hit my, like, fractured rib and, like, retract. So, they gave me some medicine to help counteract that. A nurse came in and was talking to my dad. And I later found out that this is exactly what she said. She, she was talking to my dad and she said... Did you know only a small percentage of people watching Joe's YouTube channel are actually subscribed? And that it would really help him out if you hit the subscribe button? So which my dad said, no, I did not know that, but I'll be sure to help him out now. Which you should do. Hit the subscribe button. Also, watch this live over at twitch.tv forward slash Joe underscore. Link in my bio. No, that's not what, that's not what she said to them. What she actually said was, we think we're gonna be able to move him into the pediatric ward, which was good because now I can have like a real bed, a real room. Before they moved me into the pediatric ward, they gave me a CAT scan. Which was, um, from what I could tell, pretty inconclusive. I don't think they really learned anything new from that. So then I moved into the pediatric ward. My dad was in the hospital when he was in fifth grade, and he said that it was terrible, that the nurses were all kind of mean, that there was three channels on the television to watch, that they just had pre-scheduled meals that they would just give you, and everyone got the exact same food. This was nothing like that. I was wheeled into this pediatric ward. There's a menu in there, and the kitchen staff will cook you anything. It'll be brought up into your room. Which is, that's crazy. This is like hotel stuff and it's a hospital. I look at the TV and see what they have. And so for the next like 24 hours, 
I watched, and I kid you not, let me go through all the movies I watched. The Lego Batman movie, Part of Minions, The Rise of Skywalker, The Last Jedi, Black Panther, Venom, we're at seven so far, and I think I finished on Venom. I think I watched seven movies in 24 hours, which is just absurd. Like, I'm not a very, I'm not a huge movie guy. Like, I like movies and all, but like, I'd rather watch a TV show or play some video games. He had, cause he had stayed the night with me, which is actually super cool of him. Like, thanks dad. I actually really appreciated it. It would've been much harder if my dad had not stayed the night with me. Next day I got cleared to leave, which was nice. I would've been very, very annoying to stay another day, especially since at this point, I was feeling very, very normal. Like at this point, I was breathing almost completely normally. I could take full breaths almost. I was like a couple, I was like almost to a full breath. Why was that a squeak? At about two o'clock in the afternoon, right as we finished Venom, or actually no, at this point we were watching some office episodes because they also had cable. And then at that point we were cleared to leave the hospital. My mom picked us up. My dad had left the Land Cruiser at the first hospital and then ridden in the ambulance to the second hospital. Don't close the video yet. The one good thing that came out of this was that I got to make this insane post don't really want to get into it, but I'm fine. And it's this picture from my account at Jeopardy underscore, which you should follow on Twitter. And then I followed up with, oh boy, well, this is the last thing I wanted, which if you don't get is a reference to this Family Guy clip. Don't really want to get into it, but I'm fine. Oh boy, well, this is the last thing I wanted. <laughs> so I got to take my beautiful hospital picture, me in the hospital, and use it to make a Family Guy replica, which unfortunately did not get me social media credit. It got four likes. But you can change that by following me at Jordan underscore, watching this live over at twitch.tv forward slash Jordan underscore, and dropping a subscribe below. Anyway, boys, that is how I wound up in the hospital. That is how I broke three ribs and punctured my lung. I'll catch you on Jed's crazy story time whenever I have a cool story next time.